So why was he living with you? Because he couldn't be at his own home. Why? Um, Do you love your father? Well, that's another thing. That's really? Exactly. That's the answer to my that's question. I mean, if you want to... I'm saying that it was a restraining order uh, taken out against me and I wasn't to return to the house. Check this out. A woman is suing someone whom she has known since she was five years old for theft. She accuses him of stealing her husband's medication and her kid's iPhone. This is about to get interesting. Ms. Flaherty, uh, you are suing Mr. Duquette, who you allowed to stay at your home because, according to you, he stole several things from you. What happened? Um, on G December 27th, um, he was in our home. He I don't know, but I think that was quite irresponsible of the plaintiff. I mean, if he was thrown out of his own home by his own family as a result of substance abuse, why would you take him under your own roof when you clearly have children who could be at risk? Something's not quite clear about her story. But you brought him into your home to be exposed to your children. His parents trusted me and said, you know, can you keep him under your roof? For he was how only long? there for about 36 hours. How, no, but how long were you supposed to keep him under your roof? Um... He wasn't even there the 36 hours. That wasn't my question. It wasn't. When you ex That's really weird. Why would her husband accuse her of stealing his medication first? He wouldn't just blindly accuse her out of nowhere. It's either she's taken them before or they just have the habit of accusing each other when something goes missing. I didn't take it. I know, but why would, it's such a weird <laughs> thing for your husband to accuse you of taking. Well, they were, those two were, had been sleeping on the couch the night before and he was up all night. So when he got in the shower, Who's, which he are you referring to? Chad. Okay. My husband's at work. Is it just me, or is this woman's story just all over the place? If he indeed stole a TV from his father's home to obviously buy drugs, why would you still allow him into your house despite knowing this? Also, did she just admit to taking the TV and hiding it? Like, I'm really confused right now. He took the TV and hid it. His father came over to the house and picked Wait, up- Wait, I don't know what you're saying now. <laughs> when did his father tell you he took a TV from me? Tuesday, the 24th. Before you bring him into your home? Yes, Tuesday the 24th. Okay. So wait, he stole a TV from his father to sell to buy drugs. Then he tried burning the same TV because he wanted to get rid of the evidence? Something about this entire story still sounds off. But anyway, the defendant blatantly denies stealing anything from the plaintiff. Check out what he said. Her husband's Adderall? No. She says she found it in your sock. She gave me, but let me borrow eight of them until I got my script. I ate five that day, I had three left over. I don't know how she would find them in my sock. They, they, were, they were in my sock, I admit it. They were. Okay. She let me borrow them, that's it. Like that. I'm wondering if he went down the drain too. Again, the plaintiff's facts are just all over the place and it's really hard to understand her sometimes. But yeah, she claims that her sister aided the defendant or at least knew about theft. Okay, hours. because when Chad got in the shower, he was gone. <laughs> Did he go down the drain? I don't know I'm what sorry, you're saying. I'm sorry, when I got in the shower. When you got in the shower, came out, Chad was gone, gone with, with your sister. sister. Does your sister have a drug problem? Um, that's questionable. Okay. It just keeps getting more and more confusing. It makes no sense why the plaintiff's sister would go ahead to show her husband the text conversation between her and the defendant if she was actually an accomplice. Did it never occur to her that she might just be playing along to get the defendant to confess? If she was indeed an accomplice, she wouldn't have shown the text. Why? Because she's like, is that my niece's phone? He's trying to say Right, but she showed the phone to your husband, implies she's not mm -hmm. in on it. Thereafter, you told police your sister was in on it. She was an accomplice. Yeah, he right, you think she's in on it, okay. not. I guess the substance abuse bit is true. Dude has been laughing nonstop since the beginning of the court hearing. Either what the plaintiff has been saying is just so hilarious or he's on drugs. Either way, props to the judge for putting him in his place. Then tell the police that you found missing drugs in his sock. And by the way, did you find loose Adderall? Can you, well, I, it, listen, I may have you committed right now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, okay. I am not. Just stop. Sorry. All right, listen to me. Exactamundo. The evidence presented by the plaintiff, unfortunately, is not as relevant as she hoped it was. If it had more context, that would have gone a long way. Even if he did steal it, he can say that he was just being sarcastic in the text he sent because there's nothing else that comes before or after the text. Or whatever, selling an iPhone. Hey, I, I would never steal a daughter. I, I have three daughters. I'm sorry. So what is this? This is a joke? Yeah. It says, I mean, 
I, I'm like, are they, are they? So this is like in my cousin Vinny, I shot the clerk. I shot the The defendant denies being on drugs at the moment. He said although he had abused drugs in the past due to one incident or the other, he was now clean. Now, I'm not sure I find that to be believable, but okay. I do not have a drug issue. I lost my amnesty car accident nine years ago. I got addicted to pills. I did. So, um, you know, I've been down that road a few times. I've messed up twice in the past year and a half. Once, once. That's it. No, I don't. No, I do once, not have... once doesn't exist. It's twice. The plaintiff needs to give it a rest at this point in time. It's obvious that she's got no proof of the $200 deductible for the phone, and she's yet to even prove that the defendant stole it from her in the first place. It's a $200 deductible. Do you but have it, yes or no? But I didn't pay the 200 yet. That's why. So I can go on to a sharing, but I know I, it's the $200 deductible. I'm showing no, the insurance. No, it's not a $200 deductible on a $200 used phone. That's not how the deductibles for Imagine getting an inheritance from your late father, then your sister steals that inheritance check and goes ahead to cash it at the bank. That would be pretty insane, right? Well, that's exactly what the plaintiff is accusing the defendant of doing, so let's jump right on in. Giordano, you are suing Linda and John Kelly for $3,667 that you say is owed to you, a portion of your father's estate that you did not receive. Tell me what's going on. Um, Who's the honor. gentleman next to you? My okay, so why would the defendant cash the check that was left for her mother by her father? If she indeed did that, then that's really weird, but then I'm sure she's got her reasons. People like that always do. Three are from my mother who's sitting here, and um, the other three were from a prior marriage okay. for my father. Um, that portion was distributed, and then the portion that was supposed to be given to my mother, Linda, cashed a check. Okay, so... The lawyer trusted her not to cash it? I highly doubt that, and of course the judge doesn't believe that either. Anything happening between the family and the lawyer would be documented by the lawyer. And then dividing it among the children equally... She ended up taking everything. It should have been put into escrow, but the lawyer trusted Linda not to cash it. I I'm not sure about that part. I, I need to see, can you give me all of the lawyer documents that you have, and can you talk to me and tell me what happened? Okay. I don't even understand what the defendant is saying. She just keeps going round and round in circles without answering the judge's questions. And their mother would just not keep quiet, but continues talking without permission. Make up who gets what no, money. He, That's not, stop. That that's obviously the discussion. So something happened to change the discussion and the plan. That and I'm, I, have, I may have to remove her in a no, minute. Okay, okay. Mommy, okay. so no. something happened to change the discussion and the plan. What was Exactly. He said it because he was authorized to say it and given the power to write it that way. What part of that doesn't she understand? She still not answered the question about why it was changed to be that she now takes everything. Seems a little bit too convenient and untrue that that was the original plan. My question to you is why did that original plan change? What happened between October 31st, 2014 to now to change the plan and for only you of all the children to take everything? That's what, what I wanted. Wow, okay. The judge completely put her in her place. She wasn't wrong though. The defendant seems like such a miserable person. She first came in with all the accusations about her sister's husband being a delinquent with no job and all, went round and round in circles, and when she saw she had nothing else to say, she then said the sister should be suing her mother instead of her. <laughs> what? Person. I'm not. Yeah, you kind of are. I want to know why you would rather not have a relationship with your siblings and keep money. That's what I'm trying to figure yeah, out I'm because, you know, you aren't my first rodeo. This issue comes up a lot. Where okay, that's not really relevant, is it? I mean, also, there's no way to prove that she used the money to do plastic surgery and get a flat stomach. I mean, granted that that was a lot of money that she spent on the surgery and she probably used it all on that, but still, there's no way to prove it. I put it down here and I wore four bras. It wasn't a lot of money left after it was. Well, how much money it, was there? I'm just, it how was, much money was there? It was 30000 or 20000 You took 30000 something dollars take. that was supposed to be divided among a bunch of different children That's not and you amount. decided to keep it. Oh, wow. Well, so the plaintiff said that her mother has a history of bipolar disorder, but the defendant said that the only issue the mother has is completely physical and as such, she can make the decisions that she did. I don't even know what to make of that. That she unduly coerced her. Uh, is there any medical evidence from the nursing home? 
Or they just I take care of her? I didn't get that. I didn't get that. She has a history of bipolar. She has a history of that. Just, I, just no. like you. The defendant is definitely not a good person. Whether or not the plaintiff is the real daughter of the defendant's father is irrelevant. What's relevant is that the father left all of the money and she took it. Why is she not taking accountability for her actions? She's not even his daughter. No, no. Because you no, said that. I'm no. sorry. Did you say I that in the complaint no. or am I making that up? I said that. I said this. <laughs> well, she's not his biological child, but I never said oh, she didn't love her. How did her. I know that? I'm clairvoyant. I'm just saying there was a history of... A man is suing his wife and the co-defendant for stealing from him and taking his belongings. Seems kind of interesting, right? Let's get to it. You're welcome, ma'am. Dwayne Kwamina, you are suing Nawal Muhammad? Yes. And Tibet Sherwitzel? Yes. Close. Did I get it? Very good. Okay. <laughs> For $6,858.20 in... That makes no sense at all. Why would she set up a restraining order against the husband and stop him from going into a house she was no longer living in after six months that she'd left? What reason could she possibly have for doing that? Uh, taken out against me and I wasn't to return to the house. And I'm like, restraining order for what? And they kind of explained it to me. And so she hadn't been living at the house where you were told by the restraining order not to go back to? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so the defendant denies not living in the house for six months. She said that she was, in fact, going on and off, and her kids were always there. So let's take a look at what she says. The Jersey. Okay, so when would you stay at the house in Jersey? During the week. Would you stay yes. there with him in the same room? Or no, in a different... we slept in different rooms on separate parts of the house and had separate bathrooms. And how long had that situation been going on? It had been going on for several years. For several years, okay. So the plaintiff said that he believes that the defendant intentionally got a restraining order because she wanted to be able to pack up his belongings. Now, she denies this fact. You won't believe what she said when the court asked why they were separated. Check this out. We were together and he bought it for Yeah, no, me nobody too. plans on being apart, but then okay. things happen, right? Yes, you're Why right. are you guys apart? Because he was insecure and controlling and abusive. Physically? Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You think? Exactly. He can't start claiming for the appreciative value of his belongings. It's not her fault that the market value is increased. He can only sue for the depreciated value of the items instead. Cole, okay. assuming I were to decide this was your stuff and she mm -hmm. had no right to take it, then what you would be entitled to is the depreciated value of the item that you actually lost. Do you okay. have receipts for any of these things you said you yes, did? Yes, I have them in there. And I also did that. I gave the replacement cost and also gave the actual cost. How long ago was that stuff purchased? She took a cell phone as well? Like, man, she's really got a vendetta against her ex-husband. Her reasons for taking the cell phone make no sense at all. She obviously stole it. Who used that phone when it did work? He used it, and sometimes he used my phones as well. Okay, we but you never phones. used that phone, so why did you take it? Because I needed it for a SIM card to keep my phone on. Wow. Why don't you just go get... Oh, man, that's just really sad. He's got the right to see his kids, but unfortunately, he's got to wait for the defendant to find a third party of her own choosing before that can even happen. That's just really super terrible and sucky. And it also seems as if she's not going to find a third party anytime soon either. Supervised party is and he can't provide another supervising party and, and the judge isn't staying there and making you two find one. So he just hasn't seen his kid in how long? Since March 20. But why, why don't you put your big boy pants on and go to the court and demand to see your kid?